Well, today is Sunday, February the 14th. It's Sunday afternoon. I've already had a great day at church with my Hillsdale family. And uh, hopefully we'll post that sermon a little bit later today for the book of Job. But uh, today's uh, scripture reading is a long one. It's Genesis chapter 30 and 31. You'll be able to tell that the, ver the chapters are long. And so I've actually divided up the devotional today into a part one and a part two. And of course, you'll be able to listen to this as long as you want to or turn it off whenever you want to. But the scripture reading, this first one, part one, is taken from Genesis chapter 30. Now, a little bit of the background leading into this in our study in Genesis 29, it concluded with God blessing Leah, the least favored wife of Jacob, the daughter of Laban, and she conceived sons by her husband, by Jacob. Now, we read in Genesis 29 and verse 31, the Lord, ever compassionate, quote, saw that Leah was hated or despised or, or shamefully treated, and he opened Leah's womb. But Rachel, the favorite wife, was barren. Now, altogether, there would be 12 sons that were born of Jacob. These would be the fathers of the 12 tribes of Israel. Leah, Laban's oldest daughter and uh, Jacob's first wife, uh, would bear the first four of the 12 sons. In uh, verse 32 of chapter 29, she bore Reuben. Verse 33, Simeon. Verse 34, Levi. And then finally, verse 35, Judah. Now, I've uh, titled or the chapter itself, Genesis 30, Jacob's family, 12 sons, less one. And you'll see why in just a moment. Now, uh, Rachel was the beloved wife of Jacob, but she was barren. And being barren in that ancient time was a cultural stigma for those days. And so Rachel, unable to bear children, was jealous of her sister who had already borne four sons. Now, her jealousy provoked her, and she demanded that Jacob, and I quote, give me children or else I die. Well, Jacob in verse 2, he betrays the frustration of living in a home with two unhappy wives. Jacob answered Rachel in anger and said, Am I in God's stead, who hath withheld from thee the fruit of the womb? Rather than trust in the Lord to bless her, her with a son, Rachel followed the cultural norms of her, of her day, and she demanded that Jacob give her children through her maid, Bilhah. Now, rather than honor God and the sanctity of marriage, which he had already compromised by bigamy, unfortunately, Jacob complied with Rachel's insistence and further complicated the spiritual and emotional dynamics of the home. Now, Bilhah, Rachel's maid, conceived and gave birth to the fifth and sixth sons of Jacob, Dan and Naphtali. Now, fearing she might no longer conceive by Jacob, Leah insisted that he, too, would raise up children by her maid, Zilpha. And so Zilpha conceived and gave birth to Jacob's seventh and eighth sons, Gad and Asher. Now, what a mess Jacob is making of his life and of his family. Now, he was tricked into bigamy, but now he has complicated that by having children by two different maids. Now, God, after Zilpha gave birth to Gad and Asher, the seventh and eighth son, God once again blessed Leah. Now, remember, at this point, Rachel still not had children. And Leah conceived Jacob's ninth and tenth son, Issachar and Zebulon, and also a daughter named Dinah. Now, she's the only daughter that was mentioned. No doubt there would have been other daughters in these households, but Dinah is the only one mentioned, and that is because she'll be found in the Scripture in the next chapters that are ahead. Now, uh, already the mother of six sons, Leah thought surely Jacob's love and affection will be toward her. And yet that would never happen. He loved Rachel. She was his first loved. Even though she was barren, his heart was set upon Rachel. And that was such a frustration to Leah. Now, the dynamics in this home were incredible. Jealousy, disappointment, bitterness, sorrow, 
rather than calling upon the Lord and waiting on him to hear and answer her prayers, uh, Rachel even tried what was called mandrakes. It's a fruit of the desert. And try and believing that that would give her fertility. Well, she continued to be barren until we read God remembered Rachel. God hearkened to her and he opened her womb. That is Genesis 30, verse 22. Now, uh, she gave birth to Joseph. Now, he's going to figure prominently in the chapters that are ahead. Now, J Joseph was his son, 11th son. Now, Rachel would bear one more son. It would be the 12th son. His name would be Rachel, but Rachel will die in childbirth in chapter 35. Now, with the birth of Joseph, his 11th son, Jacob's obligation of servitude to Uncle Laban was fulfilled. 14 years of marriage to Laban's daughters. He made known his intention. He was going to return to his family in Canaan. Well, Laban, the father-in-law, ever the sly one, had become a very wealthy man, and he realized that God's blessings were with Jacob. Obviously, he did not want Jacob to leave, and so he determined to bind Jacob to himself, continue to profit from his presence and his labor. Now, Jacob, now the father of 11 sons, though reasoned with his father-in-law, the Lord hath blessed Laban since his coming, since Jacob had come. And then he says this, Now when shall I provide for mine own house also? The father of 11 sons, he's very concerned, as he should have been, of providing for his family. So far, all the blessings that God had bestowed upon him had gone to Laban. Now, nonetheless, Laban constrained Jacob to remain in his household, and he asked, Jacob, what shall I give thee? And Jacob, wise to the ways of a deceiver that was his father-in-law, said, Thou shalt not give me anything, Genesis 30, 31. Now, evidence and wisdom and discernment and into the husbandry and the genetics of animals, Jacob suggested that he would be given the sheep, the goats, and the cattle that had distinctive markings and you know, God providentially marked those animals as they were born, and they became his personal pro property and were the wages that Laban paid him. Well, Laban agreed. Jacob continued to care for the flocks, even as God blessed and made him a rich man. He, we read, he increased, now this is Jacob, exceedingly, and had much cattle, maid servants, men servants, camels, and asses. In six years' time, God took Jacob from being the poor hireling shepherd of Laban to becoming a great man of wealth. Now, I'm going to briefly summarize for you Genesis chapter 30. And I've titled Genesis chapter 30, Four, good, uh, four Guideposts to Knowing God's Will. Now, in Genesis 31, we've already seen that it was Jacob's desire to go back home, go to Canaan, go back with his family, go to be there with his father, and to be there with his mother. And his desire was there, but he labored another six years in which he became so wealthy that it provoked the jealousy of Laban's household. God had so blessed uh, Jacob and Laban's own household was becoming less and less wealthy, more and more impoverished. Now Jacob looked, and he saw on the face of the countenance of Laban a change in his spirit toward him. Now, the Lord then, in verse 3 of Genesis 31, comes to Jacob, and he says to Jacob, Return into the land of thy fathers, to thy kindred, and promises, I will be with thee. Now, I want to close with four principles, four guideposts that we find in Jacob's decision to leave his uh, uncle Laban, the father of his wives, and to go back home. And you know, they're the same guideposts that God uses in our life. Now, the first of four guideposts to determine God's will is the first one is desire. A desire. Six years prior, Genesis uh, 30, 
He wanted to go home. But Laban constrained him not to leave. But the desire to go home was always there. Now, desire alone is not enough. But we do read in Psalm 47, verses 4 and 5, Delight thyself also in the Lord. He shall give thee the desires of thy heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust in him. He shall bring it to pass. And so there was a desire in the heart of Jacob to go home. God works in that way. The second guide post would be circumstances. Jacob realized the circumstances in his working relationship with Uncle Laban had changed. His countenance betrayed his spirit toward Jacob. The third guide post, God's will is often revealed and is revealed in God's word. Jacob wanted to go home. Circumstances were a motivation to go home. But it was when the Lord spoke to Jacob and said, Return into the land of thy fathers, to thy kindred, I will be with thee. And that is when Jacob knew it was time to go home. You know, Psalm 119, 105 says this, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And so we have the desire the circumstances, the word of God, and then the fourth and the final guidepost for Jacob, as it can be for us, is counsel. Counsel. Jacob went to his wives and he shared, one, that he had seen that their father's spirit toward him had changed. And God had commanded him to arise, get out of the land, return into the land of thy kindred. And his wives and their counsel concurred. And they said to Jacob, Whatsoever God hath said unto thee, do. I challenge you. When you're making major life changes, wise men seek wise counsel. Proverbs 11 and verse 14, In the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Four guideposts, a desire in your heart, the circumstances have changed. God's word is, is enlightening, giving you wisdom, seeking wise counsel. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding and all thy ways acknowledge him. Proverbs 3 verse 6, and he, God, shall direct thy paths. Four guideposts for God's will. Hear it, heed it, and do it. God bless you, my